Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. It's another day, another beautiful episode. Why am I doing these daily? Uh, because I don't have anything better to do. And I got way behind on stuff. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, check out my new underhood light. That's from Harbor Freight, who did not ever give me anything for free, Harbor Freight. What the fuck? But uh, it's pretty cool, and it'll help me film when some stuff starts happening over there with the turbo and the c10 but today we're going to talk about the alternator on this toyota and you may be wondering why you care why it's relevant to you and i'll tell you why you care and why it's relevant to you because this is an 80 244 alternator which is the same alternator that's on an ls engine almost all of them uh there's like an 80 I, I might not have the numbers right but it doesn't really matter there's a little one and a big one this one's the little one that one's the little one um I don't care about the big one as usual, but it, there's one that's like 110 amps and one that's like 130. I'm probably completely wrong on those numbers. Doesn't really matter. They fit the same. Uh, they work the same. The only difference is the big one doesn't use the little spacers, which I'll show you over there on Daryl. But this one's not charging. Um, and all they need to charge on your swap is a single wire like this right here. This is a 470 ohm resistor. It's wired in line to a 12 volt switched source. So when I turn the ignition on, this sees 12 volts and that resistor drags the 12 volts down to less than 12 volts and tells the alternator to start charging. It says, hey, my battery is going dead, start charging. And that's exactly how you do it in your swap if you're using like a carb or whatever. Um, or a non-PCM controlled alternator. If you have one of those Hollies that does everything for you, uh, it won't tell the alternator to charge. So you put a 470 ohm resistor in line, it drags it down, it's, you know, sees 11 point something volts and says time to charge. Uh, this one is not charging. Daryl's is charging. So I'm gonna get the turbo set up off the hood of Daryl, get the hood open. Um, I don't know if this will start maybe but we'll start them both up and i'll show you how to check real quick with your multimeter um that they're charging and if you all you wanted to know was how to wire your alternator for standalone use put a 470 ohm resistor in line to a switch 12 volt source um well this one's not right now but that's because i was messing with it so i'll be right back i'll clean this stuff up i'll be right back i'll show you guys what you got to do With both trucks running, it's loud as hell in here and smokes enough to probably fill all my Rona. But uh, take your multimeter, set it to the V. These things are like four bucks at Harder Freight, by the way. So, no excuse for not having one. If you bring it over, running you'll see something like 12.7 is what they typically rest at 13.4 so that's a healthy battery healthy alternator we come over here the old toyota sign we're all done with chevy truck now that's 13.6 and so I turn the battery charger off, and then it drops. I just hit the battery, and it's dropping immediately. Now, what should happen is when I take this resistor 
They should see the mortgage and start charging. They continue to go down. Has it healed itself? I don't know. Seems to be working now. That's kind of crazy. I'm gonna go ahead, wire this up right here, and let it run for a while, and see if it starts itself up. I don't think it has. Rarely does my shit fix itself, but we'll see. It's real quick to show you my my janky marine terminal backed out. That's probably what the cause was. So I'm gonna run it back in. I'll bring you guys back. So, I fixed that stud, buttoned everything back up, even zip tied and secured things a little bit. That way, if it doesn't work, I'll have to cut it all off like a clever person. Um, so, we should see resting voltage here on the battery 12.3. It's probably not fully charged. It should be good enough to start it though. Um, I'll give it a whirl and we'll see if that goes up. If you have a holly or a carburetor, you know, they come as far from MSD box, whatever, on your LS swap, or you're just using the alternator on another app application, all you need to make it charge is a 470 ohm resistor. You don't need a harness from Holly, who probably won't send it till next Christmas. You don't need anything else, you don't need anything special. Just take your stock little pigtail, tie in a 470 ohm resistor, hook it to 12 volt switch and you'll have power. And that's today's little short, super simple thing. So, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.